So I would like to welcome back our viewers. We've taken a little bit of a summer break here. But we have another interesting person to speak with today. His name is Don Cola, and he has uh, an interesting connection to the library. But uh, first of all, welcome, Don. Hi, thank you. And why don't you give people a little bit of a biographical background on yourself? Of course. So, like you said, my name is Don Cola. I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. I'll be a senior in high school this year at the Musical School of Jacksonville, um, where I run cross country and track and am involved in other things. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. How long have you lived in Jacksonville? I've been here since kindergarten. Okay. So, done all your schooling in Jacksonville? Pretty much, yes, yeah. sir. Do you like it down there? I do. It's a great city. I'm really happy to be what, down here. What do you like about Jacksonville? What are some of the highlights of people come and visit? Um, we've got great beaches. They're not typically your like Florida Keys or Caribbean beaches, but I love them. Um, it's a beautiful city. We've got the St. John's River going right through it. So great water activities, just great sunshine and ways to get outside. Very good. So why don't you let people know how you got in touch with the Margaret Chase Smith Library? Of course. So I, this past November, decided to enter the John F. Kennedy Library's Profiles and Courage essay contest. And as I was looking for a politician to profile for that contest, I discovered um, Senator Smith. And in doing more research on her, I found the library and reached out to Miss Stockwell, who was amazing and gave me all kinds of primary sources and documents to read over in my research as I got started writing. And so from there, it just kind of, you know, blossomed into writing the essay and reading more and more. Mm -hmm. And here we are. Mrs. Stockwell told me to make sure that I gave her your good wishes, her good wishes to you. Awesome. Same to her. She enjoyed working with you. Yeah, she was amazing. Even if it had to be remote. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, how did you come upon this John F. Kennedy essay contest? Have, have you entered other essay contests? Were you, was it recommended to you? How did you come to know about that? I've entered a few after it, but I was really just looking around for, you know, I really enjoy writing and I enjoy history. So I was looking around for a contest to try and expand that, practice my abilities of research and writing. Mm -hmm. And I found the Kennedy Library, and it really seemed intriguing, and something that was going to be really fun. So I stuck with it. Okay. There are hundreds, thousands of people you could have written about. Do you, do you have a sense of how you wound up with Margaret Chase Smith? I do. So at first, I just started kind of reading different, you know, websites and articles that were profiling all these different politicians that were courageous in some way in their departments. But when I found Margaret Chase Smith, what really spoke to me was that just months before my English class, we'd been talking about the Red Scare in the 50s and um, relating it to the Crucible and stuff. And yet mm -hmm. we'd never mentioned Senator Smith. And so I saw this whole side of this history that I wasn't familiar with and never heard of that I wanted to you know, explore and get to know better. Very good. You know, we get over the years, we've had um, teachers who have taught the Crucible and sometimes they then do a, a unit on Margaret Chase Smith and the stand that she took during the McCarthy era. And oh, time is sort of a blur at this point, but maybe 10 or 12 years ago, one of the theaters in Maine um, did a production of The Crucible and tied in um, a display, an exhibit about Margaret Chase Smith and the stand that she took at that time. So what are some of the things you learned about Margaret Chase Smith in doing your research? Um, I think that some of the things that really spoke to me were her confidence and then how she stood by her record. And so, and watching different videos, you know, watching her Face the Nation interview and then reading both her documents, her accounts and the Lewis accounts, it was interesting to see how both confident she was and then at least during the you know, 50s in the Red Scare, how cautious she was at first with that declaration mm -hmm. and making sure that it wasn't, you know, thrown out everywhere, that there wasn't really time for this organized 
response against her before she could deliver it, that she really kept the, um, you know, courage behind it and kept this speech at the forefront and what she believed and not letting it get too big out of control before she could give it. Who were some of the, were there some other politicians that you considered writing about? There were a few. So I was lucky to find Senator Smith pretty early, but I definitely looked at, uh, Harvey Milk was one of the ones that I look, looked at previous to that, but I think she was one of the first couple that I saw and then I stuck with her. Very good. You you did your essay on Margaret Chase Smith. What was one of the reasons we started doing these videos is we're not able to be open to the public, so we were looking for ways to get content out to the public. And so a, a lot of this becomes premised around the pandemic. Um, what was the experience like of doing research remotely? Being in Jacksonville, Florida, you, you probably wouldn't have been able to come to the library anyways. But what was that experience like for you? I think that it was definitely something different to me. You know, I've never done the classic historical research of actually going to a place like the library and pulling out the physical files. Mm -hmm. And so for me, there wasn't that much of an adjustment. I think it was definitely interesting and great that Ms. Stockwell was so supportive and that I could just email her and asking for different materials. I think that really made it an easy process remotely mm -hmm. and didn't make it hard to, you know, put together. Yeah. Well, just in the time that I've been a historian and when I first started out, it was a foregone conclusion that you'd have to go to the archives and do research. Mm -hmm. um, but then with the progress of technology and the internet, you can scan documents and they can be available online and you can access them from anywhere in the world. And that's just more and more the way the historical field and the archival field is going. And there's some great advantages to that. You can be in Jacksonville, Florida, being doing research on material that's in Skowhegan, Maine. Mm -hmm. But the disadvantage is, is that often you, you don't know what you're looking for till you find it. And um, so it's what often is referred to as the serendipitous discoveries. You're looking in one area and you find something completely unexpected as you go through the documents. Mm -hmm. That's the downside of having everything prepackaged. But right. It is what it is and we just make the best of it. And hopefully we'll get to the point where we can have the best of both worlds. We can make content easily available to people and then they can follow it up with a visit. And the other thing that's lost is that the advantage of our library is it's, it's not um, some college or university, it's right where she lived. And having that context of the papers where she lived, and quite often, we especially see it with school kids, she doesn't become a real person, you get to go into her house. And then, right. and then Margaret becomes real, not just a, a cardboard cutout. Right. Um, very good. So hopefully that was a good experience for you. And one of the inclinations or indications that we have that it was is that you, unlike almost every other researcher that we've ever had, followed up and, and by email asked if there were things you could do for us. Can you talk about what prompted that? Yeah, yeah definitely. So I had kind of tried to keep reading about Margaret Chase Smith throughout the spring, even once I finished my essay. And as the school year winded down and I was faced with this, you know, COVID summer of not being able to get a lot of opportunities that you normally would during the summer, I was looking for something to, you know, do with my time and something productive that'd be both interesting and a learning experience for me. And I thought of the library and decided to reach out and see what I could do remotely for y'all in terms of, you know, any, that was honestly for anything. And y'all yep. have been really great about giving me stuff to do. Of course, it would be a lot more that we could have had you do if you could be here, but you couldn't. So we had to think a little more creatively. Can you tell people what we've had you been doing? Yeah, definitely. So I think one of the first things y'all asked me to do was look at some of the escape rooms that y'all have been developing online through Google for especially elementary school students and Maine students. And that progressed to looking over and reviewing some of the virtual exhibits that y'all put out and then the lesson plans y'all made for high school students and just kind of getting a little bit of perspective on those or throwing in my two cents on a lot of those projects. Yeah. 
So again, we're having to adapt to a world of COVID and probably the reality that school groups won't be able to visit the library this fall and maybe even to the spring and figure out how we can get our, make our content available online. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, lesson plans, exhibits, and escape rooms. And the thing that we're currently working on is virtual field trips to try to give people the feeling of an experience of actually going through the house. And I, 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 was, I was just reviewing that yesterday, so I don't think I've shared it with you, H have I? No, sir, not yet. Yeah, so I have a couple more things that I can share with you. Oh, awesome. So we appreciate it because it's hard for us to test things out because we already know this information. So right. it's more interesting and more beneficial to see how students will actually be trying to navigate on these websites, how well that works for them. So we very much appreciate you giving us that student perspective. Yes, and I'm grateful for the opportunity. I love doing it and hope I can keep doing stuff like the virtual field trips, you know, into the fall and such. So. We're, we're still creating material. So as we do, we'll send it on to you to see what you think. Sounds great. A couple of um, areas to pursue. Um, you just alluded to that this is a different summer for all of us. What would you normally be doing in a summer in Florida? Um, I think aside from the normal fun stuff, like going to the beach and taking advantage of the sunshine and warm weather, I was literally looking to get some, you know, in-person volunteering, shadowing, or some kind of small internship this summer to build some experience. That's what I was hoping to do, and none of those plans came to fruition, obviously, with COVID, so mm -hmm. we've had to adapt. Have, have you still been going to the beach? We have, we've been able to go several times, you know, spreading out, keeping away from large crowds, but it's been nice. How are the crowds at the beach? They're pretty good. Everybody's, they're not as big as they are most summers. I think we don't have as many of the tourists necessarily as we normally would, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of the locals are still taking advantage of it and enjoying it. Mm -hmm. And your hope had been to do some internships. And do you know in what sort of areas you were hoping to, find some opportunities? Uh, I really wasn't sure yet. I was just kind of looking for experience in a wide variety, you know, business or something along those lines, but mm -hmm. I hadn't gone far enough along with those plans pre-COVID to really have a fine-tuned sense of where I was looking. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you do have an interest in history. Um, is it one that you've had for a long while or is it a recent development? It's one I've had for a long while. Um, I've always loved reading and so I've always been drawn to reading histories and reading those kinds of books. And I've just had a span of amazing teachers in history, frankly, that have really helped to cultivate that and bring it alive. So, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite time period in history or a favorite place in history? I really don't. I learned taking world history two years ago that I kind of love it all and I love seeing how it's all changed throughout the millennia frankly mm -hmm. so do you have favorite history books that you've read um i wouldn't say favorite books necessarily but i really enjoy eric larson's books okay those recently and so those are great which eric larson books have you read do you remember i've read dead wake devil in the white city in the garden of the beast and i'm currently reading his new one the splendid in the vial okay what what did you think of devil in the white city it was definitely intriguing to be sure. I think, you know, people might come for the devil and the, you know, murder side of it, but I almost mm -hmm. found the World Fair stuff to be as intriguing, if not more, listening mm -hmm. to how those people had to deal with the problems and face them down. Do you remember that there's a historical character in it named David Richards? I do not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's one of the detectives who wound up tracking down yeah. the yeah. devil. It's ringing a bell now that I think back to it. I read it like a year ago, so I'm okay. having to pull back to it. It's a, it's a book that I've used a lot um, in my historical studies. Mm -hmm. uh, so why don't we talk a little bit more about school? 
Uh, you said you're, you're going into your senior year yes, at sir. the Episcopal School of Jacksonville. Yes, so why don't you give us an idea of what schooling became like in the spring of 2020 for you? It was definitely a different experience. We went fully online to Zoom. We actually kept essentially the same daily schedule that we would have normally and just Zoomed into every class with the teachers for mm -hmm. discussions and curriculum and such. And so in that respect, there was still routine, but waking up five minutes before class instead of you know an hour, an hour and a half before class was definitely a change. Um, and then just adapting to not having that in-person education was different. But I think it worked out. We did a really good job of maintaining the school environment, essentially. Mm -hmm. Do you know what you're going to be doing? Uh, has school already started down there? Uh, we have not. We'll start next week. And in what form will you be starting? We're going to start in-person live classes. They put in a lot of restrictions and safety measures, so we'll all be wearing masks. They've actually made class sections smaller to be able to spread out students. They've spread out desks. Um, we're not going to have any large assemblies. So they put in a lot of precautions, you know, sanitation, all that stuff to make mm -hmm. it as safe as possible. But we're going to go back in person. Mm -hmm. The Episcopal school, is it uh, just a high school or is it going to the lower grades as well? Um, so this year for the first year will be a K through 12 high school. Okay. Yes, sir. And how many students altogether? I'm Probably. not sure. I think each high school class is about 150. Okay. So, yes, sir. But, but then you also have the K through eight going to the same facility? Yeah, so I think, uh, so we actually have two different campuses for the elementary schools okay. um, on either side of the city. So. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to get back to school? I am. It's been a very weird five months, and so I'm ready to get back into a little bit of routine and mm -hmm. get back into the work. Mm -hmm. Do you have favorite subjects? Uh, I'm really looking forward to this coming year at least. I have a U.S. government class that I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. and a psychology class that I'm really excited for. Very good. Do you, are those full year classes or do you have half year classes? They are. So every class I'm taking this year is full year. Last year I had a few semester classes like economics, but this year they're all full year. Does your school do advanced placement classes? We do, yes, sir. Are you taking any? I am. So essentially all of my classes this year will be advanced placement. Oh, you're going to have a busy year. Yeah, it's going to be a workload for sure. And oftentimes that uh, means summer reading. It does. So I actually got, I got lucky this year. We only have, I only have one book actually, just for my literature class. Oh. And what has that um, been? What's it's the book called Obathon. I actually haven't started it yet. I've been finishing my other reading for the summer first. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll get to it this afternoon or tomorrow or something. Um, so this is an AP literature course you're gonna be taking? It is, yes sir. Is is it American literature or world literature? I'm not sure that it specifies. Okay. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. Very good. So, sorry. Uh, have you had a good summer? I have. It's been nice, you know, quiet, pretty quiet, but mm -hmm. good. You mentioned also that you have an interest in writing. Can you speak more about that? I do. It's something that I've loved since I was as little as I can remember, I think since I started writing. Yeah. Um, for a long time, it was a lot of just little, pretty bad, frankly, fiction stuff. Yeah. Um, this past year, I've taken advantage of more competitions like the Margaret or the okay. Profile and Kennedy essay and others to work on my research writing and my academic writing. So mm -hmm. now it kind of spans all of that from fiction to nonfiction and anything in between. Have you saved your bad early writing? I have some of it. I have some of the first little mini novels that I ever tried to write Excellent. that I'll look at occasionally and then put away for another two years. <laughs> I wrote my first book when I was in fifth grade. 
And uh, maybe five to seven years ago for Christmas, my mother gave it to me. Um, she had saved it. I had more or less forgotten about it. It was about 50 or 60 pages. Um, so save it. It, it, it. It's probably not going to be your best writing, but it's amusing. And it's all part of the process. It's all part of helping you develop to become a better writer. So yes, sir. Definitely. Keep pursuing it. I, one of the things I've started doing is teaching writing. And I always tell all my students that everyone has a story. Everyone has a at least a memoir in them. Mm -hmm. um, but other forms of writing as well. Is, it, is writing something you think you'll pursue? I think it is. Uh, I'm not sure I'll pursue it as like a, the forefront of my career, but I think it's definitely something that I'll always, you know, keep to the side or at some point, hopefully maybe bring it to the forefront. But mm -hmm. it'll always be with me and be a hobby or at least a passion. So as a senior, what are you thinking about for the future? I'm hoping to go to college next fall. You know, who knows what that'll actually look like. I've looked a little bit. I haven't really narrowed it down much or figured out a list yet, but I've been looking around. Do you have um, regions of the country that you're looking at? I'll probably stay, if not in the southeast, on the Atlantic coast in some capacity. So. And do you have ideas of what you'd like to study in college? Right now, I'm looking at either like global affairs or international relations or uh, political science, something along those lines. Okay. So, well, I'll use that as a plug. I mean, now that you um, are connected to the library, uh, every year we do a lecture on international relations. Um, it's called the Leak Shaw Lecture on International Affairs. And you've called it to mind because we're actually thinking about trying to do it in the fall. We've sort of been holding out to see when we might be able to have public events, but it doesn't look like that's going to be this fall. So it may have to be a Zoom event, but I've already started to talk with potential speakers. So be on the lookout for an announcement about that. Although the problem may be that it will conflict with your being in school. Although another advantage of doing things by Zoom is that you can record them and people can watch them when it's convenient for them. Yeah. So you um, will, one of your projects for this year will be to determine where you'll want to go to college and uh, you have an idea of what you want to study. Uh, are you looking forward to that whole process of the college search? I am. I think that to a degree it's really exciting. I've started trying to work at some of the essay writing, application writing a little bit, and mm -hmm. that's become much more painful than I thought it would be much faster than I hoped it would. Mm -hmm. But it's still kind of fun to challenge myself like that and have to essentially sell myself, you know, yeah. in 650 words or however long the word count is. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's been a long time since I had to do those. Uh, can you give us an idea of the sorts of questions they're asking you? To respond mm -hmm. to. So the basic essay is pretty much an open book. Usually you talk about a challenge you overcome or an experience you've had. Some of the more specific questions are anything from talk about a special talent you have to talk about somebody you see as a community builder and how mm -hmm. they've influenced you and how they've built a community essentially. So tell us about some of your special talents. I don't have many. That's been a very hard question to look at. Um, I'm not musically inclined or anything like that. So I've had to really try and think hard of something to write about. Mm -hmm. Do you have extracurricular activities? I do. So aside from sports, me and my friends this past fall started a camping club at our school, which has been really fun. And then mm -hmm. I'm involved in dance marathon, um, discipline council, and then a few other clubs and such. Mm -hmm. And I believe you said you are a cross-country runner? I am, yes, sir. Um, do you know, are you going to be able to have athletics this fall? Right now, I think they're trying to. They've pushed back the start of any athletics until kind of early to mid-September. But as of right now, that start is still uh, happening, essentially. So hopefully that goes through if it can be done safely. Mm -hmm. 
do you do track the cross country throughout the year or is it a, either a fall or a spring sport so i'll do cross country in the fall and then come winter start training for our spring track season okay very good so. have you been running through the summer i have yes sir do you run daily i usually try and run six days a week how many miles yes, do you sir. try to get in anywhere from from five to ten a day so. or a day a day or for the week yes sir. for a day a day okay so you're getting yes, quite sir. a bit for the for the the week uh do you have ever have an ambition or maybe you've yeah. already done it to run a marathon uh i've had a little bit of ambition but i haven't done it yet i've done a few kind of half marathons and training but i kind of want to get through my like high school career before I start looking at training for a marathon. Okay. So. so um any final thoughts that you have to share? It's almost coming up on a half hour. The time always flies when you have interesting people to talk to. <laughs> any final thoughts? This has been thoughts? great. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a really a pleasure to do this. Um, uh, I'm gonna take advantage of you being in Florida. Okay. This um, library is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna take advantage of you being in Florida. Uh, how, how, did the hurricane affect you? Hurricane Isaias? It did not. We got really lucky that it kind of bypassed us and we have afternoon thunderstorms that are a lot more fierce than it was where I live at least. I know it was pretty bad for the Carolinas, but we got lucky. Okay. Yeah, we got some remnants of it. It was a tropical storm by the time it hit us and it actually raced through pretty quickly. We got a little bit of rain out of it and it got a little gusty winds, um, not many big branches, but a lot of little branches came down. I spent uh, one morning cleaning up a lot of debris from, from the tropical storm having gone through. Well, I wanna, Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us and good luck with the coming school year. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, wish you well and we'll say goodbye to you and say goodbye to our audience as well.